I have students on bass, banjo, mandolin, and ukulele in addition to guitar, so I'll do my best to keep these videos from becoming completely guitar-centric, but it probably will get the majority of the spotlight since most of my students are guitarists. Because of that, I thought I would kick things off by trying to use the guitar to relate all five instruments to one another. To show you how there are certain visual patterns on the fretboard that connect across all five instruments, and as a more general theme, that there's a connection between instruments that sometimes seem completely different from one another, like the guitar and the saxophone. Certain universal musical concepts carry over from one to the other. And on another level, to get you starting to think, if you haven't already, about trying to use other instruments to inspire what you do on your own. As we learn more and more on our instrument, we gain knowledge, but at the same time become somewhat confined by that knowledge as we start to develop an idea of how our instrument is supposed to be played. But when we look to another instrument, we can sometimes come away with ideas that are completely unique and that we might never have thought of if we hadn't looked elsewhere. Then when you come back to your instrument and experiment, you may find some really interesting and new and fresh musical territory to explore. So, I think the place to begin in that process is just looking at the standard tuning of, inch, of each instrument and how they relate to one another. So, the guitar standard tuning is E, A, D, G, B, E. I've always found an acronym that leaves a strong imprint, Eddie Eight Dynamite, Goodbye Eddie. The bass shares the top four strings tuning. E, A, D, G. The only difference on the bass is that the strings are at a much lower pitch than the guitar, but they have the exact same notes. So for a bass player, when you're watching a guitarist, whatever they do on their top four strings will translate exactly to your instrument, just at a lower pitch. For the banjo, ignore the top string of the guitar, and just looking at the other five, the center three of those five are D, G, B just like the center three strings on the banjo. So if you're a banjo player watching a guitarist and they play something on those three strings, that will translate directly to your instrument, the only difference being the tone. The ukulele would be as if you were to bar the bottom four strings of the fifth fret of the guitar, which gives you G, C, E, A. So relatively speaking, the tuning hasn't changed, at least in the sense of the distance between the notes involved. The confusing part is we're dealing with new notes now. So if you've ever dabbled in the two instruments, you've probably noticed on the ukulele how many of the chord shapes look exactly the same as the chord shapes of the guitar, but with a different name. And that's why the structure will be the same because the distance between each note and the tuning is the same. But the names change a little bit because we've change the actual pitch of the notes. Another way to think about this too is if there's a capo on the fifth fret of the guitar, then those bottom four strings will be exactly the same on the ukulele and the guitar. One other small difference there, and this is true of the fifth string of the banjo or the fourth string of the ukulele, is that that string is pitched much higher than normal, which is called re-entrant tuning. And the mandolin might have the most confusing connection of all, and maybe the least applicable, but if you take the top four strings of the guitar or the four strings of the bass and play them in reverse, G, D, A, E, flip that around and you get the mandolin, G, D, A, E. So although in the process of learning the mandolin, I sometimes would try to picture it as though it was an upside down guitar or bass, I wouldn't say that was the most helpful way to go about it. There were certainly more fruitful ways of learning that instrument, but there were still a few useful insights and ideas that I came away with from those times of trying to imagine it that way. More than anything, the idea is just to start thinking about this a little bit so that when you see an instrument that's not your own, you can still make some connections. And like I said, even where it appears there are no connections, you can still probably come away with some interesting ideas to play around with. 